Amen? Well, last week we started a series um, entitled, We're Gonna Make It. Amen? We're gonna make it. That's a series for the house, and, and I, I'm grateful to God for that encouragement to know that regardless of what has happened, regardless of what will happen, we're going to make it. Tell somebody on your left or on your right, we're going to make it. Yeah, that's right. Y'all, y'all didn't sound too enthused. Let, let me try that again. Tell, you might be sitting by yourself. Just talk to yourself. Encourage yourself for a minute. Tell yourself, we're going to make it. <laughs> amen, amen. That, that was the title of the series that we started last week. And, and the message uh, from last week was unify the house. If we're going to make it, we have to unify the house. The Bible says that a house divided against itself can't stand. And so we have to become unified if we're going to make it. Our key verse last week was found in Matthew 12, 25, saying that every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself would not stand. Beloved, if we're going to make it, we're going to have to be united. Some key points to that message were that we've got to recognize the move. We've got to recognize that God is moving. We know he's moving in the country. He, we know he's moving in the land. We know he's moving in our lives. We know he's moving at CCBC. And if we're going to make it, if we're going to unify the house, we have to recognize the move. But not only that, we have to refuse the mess. Tell somebody, refuse the mess. Uh, life can get messy. Life can get bitter. Life can be filled with hatred and negative speech. But if we're going to be unified, we've got to refuse to buy in to the mess. That's what the enemy tried to do with Jesus. He tried to give him some mess, and Jesus said, uh-uh, I reject it. I refuse that mess. But not only do you have to recognize the move and refuse the mess, if we're going to unify the house, we have to remember the mission. Our mission is to gather, not scatter. Our gift mission is to win souls to Christ and make disciples. So if we're going to make it, the first thing we have to do is we have to unify the house. And then today, the second thing that we have to do if we're going to make it is that we've got to learn to just keep going. Tell somebody, we got to learn to just keep going. Just keep going. Don't give up. Don't quit. Just keep going. Yeah, as I thought about these words, just keep going, and as I thought about Black History Month, I thought about one of my favorite quotes from Harriet Tubman. You all know the history of Harriet Tubman, right? You know that she's a famous abolitionist who freed herself and others from slavery. And after she made it out, she didn't just stop and be satisfied in her own freedom. She went back to help free others. And as I thought about the words, just keep going, I was reminded of the strong counsel that Harriet Tubman would give to the slaves as she prepared to, to lead them from bondage to freedom, as she prepared to lead them from slavery in the South to freedom in the North before they started on that journey, she would give them a strong command. Uh, she would tell them in order to prepare them for the hard and arduous journey that was before them, she would tell them that, listen here, as we get ready to get started on this field trip, <laughs> one thing you're going to have to know is that we're going to have to just keep going. She wanted the slaves that were running away with her to know that there'd be no turning back. There'd be no quitting on the job. There'd be no opportunity to throw in the towel and go back to the plantation. Uh, she wanted them to know that if you're going to make it to freedom, you're going to have to just keep going. If you want to get to the destination, you're going to have to follow these commands and just keep going. This is, this is what Harriet Tubman told the slaves before they went on the trip. She told them, listen here, if you hear the dogs, just keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. 
If they're shouting behind you, keep going. Don't ever stop. Keep going. If you want to taste freedom, just keep going. Yeah, that, that's what she told him. That's what she told him. She said, you can't be distracted by the barking of the dogs. You can't be distracted by the heat of the torches. You can't be intimidated by the voices behind you. If you're going to make it, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to just keep going. The same is true for us, church. If we're going to make it, if we're going to make it as a church, if we're going to make it as a family, if we're going to make it in our marriage, if we're going to make it in our community, we've got to learn to just keep going. Since we're honoring black history today, I wanted to use Harriet Tubman to inspire us to keep going. Harriet Tubman was born not too far from here in 1822. She was born on the eastern shore in Dorchester, Maryland. And at the age of 27, she made her escape from slavery to freedom in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But after she got to safety and freedom, she immediately returned to Maryland to rescue her family, her friends, and other slaves. And over a 10-year period, Harriet Tubman made 19 trips into the Deep South to lead over 100 slaves to freedom in the North. In achieving this bold accomplishment, I imagine the strong command that she gave them before they left on the trip was key to their success. She told them, no matter what's chasing you, keep going. No matter what you see, keep going. No matter what you hear, just keep going. Don't stop. If you want to taste freedom, you got to keep going. These words of encouragement were important for the people to whom she spoke. She was speaking to people who'd been beaten, betrayed, and belittled. They were frightened, discouraged, and unsure of the destiny that lay ahead of them. And as she sensed their hesitancy, as she understood their timidity, as she got a hold of their doubt and, and recognized their quivering faith, she recognized that she needed to give them a strong call to courage. She recognized that she had to give them a call admonishment that no matter what happened, they just had to keep going. This call to courage, this exhortation to persistence, this demand for tenacity in the face of great difficulty didn't come to Harriet just because she wanted to get folk free. Indeed, her demand for tenacity, her command for courage, her demand for bravery in the face of adversity was rooted in something else. It was rooted in her faith. You see, I don't know whether you know it or not, but Harriet Tubman was a woman of great faith. According to historians, Harriet Tubman grew up during a period that is known as the Second Great Awakening. The Second Great Awakening was a, a Protestant religious revival that took place all across the United States. The Awakening came about because religious leaders held revivals all throughout the land. They held tent meetings and all across the country they did this in an attempt to draw people back to the church. And, and beloved, their efforts paid off because indeed revival did break out. It, it was the second great awakening. And that same revival hit the eastern shores of Maryland. It hit the place that Harriet lived and she found Jesus. During that time, a number of black female preachers preached the message of revival and sanctification, and Tubman is known to have clung to their teachings. It was her strong faith that helped her break barriers and accomplish significant things in her life. Besides freeing herself and others from slavery during the Civil War, Harriet Tubman served as an army, as a cook, as a nurse, as a scout, as a spy. She could do it all. This sister, she was even a seamstress. She, she, she was the first woman to lead an armed assault. The famous raid on the Cumbe River 
uh, in that raid, she led the army to burn down several plantations, to seize thousands of dollars worth of food and supplies, and to free more than 700 slaves. This woman did it because of her faith. And if, and if that wasn't enough of a biography, after the war, uh, this woman went on to continue her work as an abolitionist, and she even got involved and became a leading voice in the women's suffrage movement. She was a founding member of the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs and the keynote speaker at that first meeting. And beloved, that club still exists today. But not only that, Harriet Tubman was a philanthropist. She took a portion of the property that she owned in upstate New York and donated it to a local church and told them, use this to build a home for age colored folk and for impoverished colored people. This woman was a great woman of God and she was known in her community and because of all that she accomplished, she was often interviewed because of the black girl magic. Before there was black girl magic, people wanted to know all about her. And so as they interview her, we find out some of the inner workings of who she was and why she did what she did. In those interviews, she wasn't ashamed to let it be known that her relationship with God was a key factor in her life. Tubman is quoted as saying, I'm going to try to say it like she said it, I always told God, I'm going to hold study on you. You got to see me through. That's, that's how they said she said it. She said, I'm going to hold steady to you, God. And you got to see me through. Tubman always told people that she listened carefully to the voice of God. As she led slaves north, she said that she would only go where she felt God leading her to go. A fellow abolitionist, Thomas Garrett, said of her, he said, I never met a person of any color who had more confidence in the voice of God than Harriet Tubman. Other abolitionists said that she was one of the best and bravest persons on the continent. It, it's clear by her own testimony and by the testimony of those that knew her and interviewed her that Tubman's source of strength and courage came from her faith in God. It came from her belief in him to be the deliverer and protector of the weak. It was her deep confidence in God's providential guidance and protection over her life that caused her to live and lead with extreme brave courage. She led with strength. And as I thought about this woman in her life and all the black girl magic she possessed, I couldn't help but wonder what Bible story inspired her the most. Was it the story of Daniel in the lion's den? Or was it the story of the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace? What inspired Harriet Tubman to just keep going? Was it the story of Moses leading the people out of Egypt, or was it the story of David as he fe defeated Goliath? All right, all right. To be honest, any of these could have been the stories that encouraged Harriet to be brave and very courageous. Daniel had to be brave and courageous to trust God's deliverance in the middle of a lion's den. The Hebrew boys had to be brave and courageous to trust God as they stood unarmed and unharmed in a fiery furnace. Moses had to be brave and very courageous as he led a million Negroes out of Egypt. And David had to be courageous as he squared off with a 400-pound Goliath. Harriet Tubman well could have been inspired to be brave and courageous by any or all of these stories. But as, as I read the words of Joshua 1 and 9, those words reminded me of Harriet Tubman and all that she did. It was the words of Joshua 1 and 9 that, that made me think that perhaps these were the words that encouraged her to be strong and courageous. Perhaps these were the words that let her know that God was with her wherever she went and so she could hear his voice telling her, go this way, don't go that way. Joshua 1 and 9 reads like this. It says, have I not commanded you? 
Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now God spoke these words to Joshua as he prepared to lead the nation of Israel from a land of slavery and bondage to a land of milk and honey. God told him to be strong and courageous. He, he said, don't be afraid and don't be dismayed. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. I don't know if these words inspired Harriet Tubman or not, but as she led slaves from bondage and captivity to, to the land of freedom, it's clear that she had to be strong and she had to be brave. She had to be strong and she had to be courageous. She couldn't be afraid and she couldn't be dismayed. She had to be very clear that God was with her. Much like Joshua who stood on the precipice of leading God's people from what was to what could be. Harriet Tubman did the same thing. Every time she grabbed a group of folk to lead them to free them, she stood on the precipice of taking them from what was to what could be. In fact, as I read God's command to Joshua to be strong and of good courage, and I remembered Harriet's command to the slaves to just keep going, it felt like I was reading the same text. It felt like the intent of both of those commands, of both of those exhortations were so in tune with one another that we could literally pull them together to be encouraged. Yeah, in, in my mind's eye, it seemed to me that if I took what God told Joshua over there and put it together with what Harriet told the slaves over there, we'd have a black history Holy Ghost moment. <laughs> a black history Holy Ghost moment that would speak to us today and say, no matter what you face, if you hear the dogs barking, be strong and of good courage and just keep going. If you see the torches burning, don't be afraid and don't be dismayed. Just keep going. If there's shouting behind you, don't ever stop. The Lord is with you. And if you want to taste freedom, just keep going. I don't know what you're going through today, but I stopped by on this, this Sunday in February to encourage you and remind you that regardless of the dogs and the torches, regardless of the voices and the noise, regardless of the challenges and the obstacles, the command of God to the people of God remains the same. We're called to be strong, and we're called to be courageous. Regardless of the lion's den, regardless of the fiery furnace, regardless of the pharaoh, the Egyptians, or the giants, the command of God is don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Just keep going. If you don't remember anything I say this morning, I need you to remember this. Be strong. Be courageous. And just keep going. I know, I know that in today's society, with all that we're going through, there are a multitude of reasons why things have been difficult. I know that there are many of us, or some of us, or a few of us, or maybe just one of us, who feel like it's just all been too much. We feel like we've been through so much already that we really are not sure if we can take it anymore. We really don't know how to just keep going. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Many of us have felt like that. We've all had times in our life when we didn't feel like we could keep going. I remember a few years after I got saved, I was sitting in my church back then, and I was alone in the sanctuary. And I, I don't remember what was going on in my life at the time, but I remember feeling uh, kind of isolated and alone. I, I remember feeling like I, I didn't have a lot of hope. I, I remember feeling like I didn't understand what the future might hold for me. And there in the silence of that congregation, in the silence and the solitude of that sanctuary, I heard the voice of God tell me, be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid and don't be dismayed because I'm with you wherever you go. 
Uh, side note, that's a good reason for you to remember the Word of God. That's a good reason why we're supposed to memorize God's Word because He'll recall it to you in the time of need. I, I declare He will. He'll bring it up back to your remembrance in the time when you need it the most. And right there in that sanctuary, I felt the Spirit of God speaking this verse to me, be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid and don't be dismayed. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. I didn't, I didn't know, obviously, where I would go in life. I didn't understand where I would go. But what I did understand was this was God speaking to me. He, he spoke it to me so, so powerfully that it became part of my life verse. It's been the verse that, that has guided my life all these years. And sitting there alone as a teenage girl, I, I understood that verse to mean that, baby, things are going to be tough. Life isn't going to be no better roses. A, a man that is born of the woman is a few days and full of trouble. And I heard God telling me it's going to be rough sometime, but I want you to be strong and I want you to be full of courage. I don't want you to be afraid and I don't want you to be distressed. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. And I remember taking that verse and, and calling it God's promise to me. <laughs> I remember saying, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know that whatever it holds, he is going to be with me. It ministered to me back then. It's ministered to me for the rest of my life. And, and it's taught me and led me and guided me to know that God is with me wherever I go. You know, I've gone on to accomplish some things in my life. I, I, I've, I've done a lot of things. And, I got ministered as a, a license as a minister and ordained and, 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 and have worked the last 13 years of my life in leadership and ministry at Central Union Mission. And while that journey has been rewarding, certainly there have been times when it's been quite a challenge. There are times when I wanted to give up and throw in the towel. There were times when I wanted to leave and, and not come back, but the words of Joshua 1 and 9 kept telling me, just keep going. Those words reminded me that I have to be strong and courageous, that I can't be afraid and I can't be dismayed, that no matter where I am, God is with me. In fact, when I applied to the position here later on, they told me that it was partly my position at Central Union Mission that got me the position here. But if I would have thrown in the towel, if I would have quit on the journey, where would I be now? You see, back then I didn't, I didn't understand, but I understand it now. Back then I didn't know that on the other side of 13 years, was Calvert County Baptist Church. And the only way that I could find that out was that I just had to keep going. I didn't know what was on the other side of opposition. I didn't know what was on the other side of being called everything but a child of God. I didn't know that vice presidency was on the other side of rejection. I didn't know that promotion was on the other side of my trials and tribulations. I, I didn't know that a senior position at this church was on the other side of my pain and suffering. I had to keep going in order to find out. Beloved, you'll never find out what's on the other side of the drama in your life unless you learn to keep going. Harriet Tubman never would have been able to get the people to experience life on the other side of slavery unless she had them keep going. Joshua would have never been able to get the children of Israel to experience land in the free and land in, uh, in a land that was flowing with milk and honey unless he learned to teach them just keep going. 
And CCBC, we can't get to the other side of what God has for us unless we learn to just keep going. You can't throw in the towel. You can't quit. You can't stop going. If you hear the dogs in the woods, you got to be strong and of good courage and just keep going. If you see the torches burning, you can't be afraid and you can't be dismayed. You got to just keep going. When you hear shouting behind you, don't stop coming. Don't stop doing what he's called you to do. Just keep going. Beloved, this is a word for the church. This is a word for us individuals. This is a word for our communities. If you want to see what's on the other side of your trouble, you got to keep going. Don't give up on your marriage. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Don't give up on your children. Just keep going. Don't give up on your career. Don't give up on your family. Just keep going. Life is tough. Life is going to be rough, but you, you've got to learn to grab hold of the promises of God and apply them to your life and just keep going. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and very courageous. And just keep going. As we sit here this morning, I know that we are a long ways from the days of Harriet Tubman and slavery. But if you listen closely, you can still hear the dogs barking in the woods. As a people, the dogs that chase us today are the dogs of bigotry, discrimination, and the persistent inequities that lie rooted in the fabric of this country. We're a long way from the torches in the woods, but if you squint your eyes, you'll still see that the torches are burning. They're burning in our political parties and our communities. They're burning in nationalist movements and far-right groups. They're burning in cities and towns across the land. The torches are still burning. We're a long way from the shouting in the woods, but if you cup your hands over your ears, you'll still hear the voices. They're shouting in courtrooms and prisons. They're shouting in the justice system and in police uniforms. They're shouting in over police communities of colored field people with biased prosecutors and corrupt criminal justice systems. They're shouting when we say black lives matter and they holler back all lives matter. They're shouting when no one's held accountable for the black life that's lost because maybe they don't all matter. And that's why it's important for me and it's important for you to know this verse and to embrace this verse because while we're out of the woods, <laughs> we're not out of the mess. And if we're going to make it, after all these years, we need to learn the lesson over and over and over again. Even though it's tough, even though it's rough, be strong and a good courage. If you hear them barking in the woods, keep going. If you hear them barking in the church house, keep going. If you see the torches burning, be, keep going. Don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, just keep going. Know that the Lord is with you wherever you go. And if you hear the shouting behind you, don't ever stop. Whatever you want, if you want to get it, you got to keep going. If you want to chase freedom, just keep going. This is God's word to us, CCBC. What can't we handle? What can't we do? With a history like this, you gonna quit? With a history like this, you gonna say, I can't take all that drama? <laughs> Be strong. That's right. That's right. Don't run away. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. God is with you. <laughs> That's
That's what Harriet said. God is with you. That's what he told Joshua. I am with you. Now all you got to do is just keep going. Amen. Amen. We're going to make it. We're going to unify the house, and we're going to keep going. <laughs> Amen. Listen, listen. It, this is the word of God to the people of God. And, and I don't know what you may be caught up in today, but God loves you, and he cares for you. And by his spirit, because of his spirit, because of his power, you can keep going. But if you don't know him in the pardoning of your sin, if you don't know him as your personal savior, don't stop listening now. Don't stop looking now. Keep going. Make the phone call. Call us. We want to hear from you. We want to lead you to Jesus Christ. Drop a line on the social media page. Uh, email us. We want to walk with you and tell you about the God that can help you to be strong, that'll cause you to be courageous, that'll keep you from being afraid and dismayed, and he'll be with you wherever you go. Amen. Or maybe you left, maybe you left church. Maybe you, you've gone other places. Maybe you, you, you've lost your way with God. He says, come back. Don't, don't do that. Keep coming with me. Just keep coming with me. We'd love to walk with you. We'd love to talk with you. Please just, just connect with us so we can talk to you about the God that loves you, the God that died so that you might have a right to eternal life. Beloved. Just keep going. Don't give up. Never give up. Don't stop. Just keep going. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, I thank you for who you are and who you've called us to be. I thank you for the examples, for the witnesses that are all around us. Witnesses of bravery and courage. I thank you for those that are brave and courageous in their own life as single mothers and single fathers dealing with sickness and illness and drama and trauma. God, I thank you for the people of color who haven't stopped. I thank you for everyone that still kept going. And God, for every one of us that is tired, that is weary along this journey, I pray that you would cause us, that you would help us, that you would encourage us to not be afraid and to not be dismayed. Help us to remember that you are with us. And because you're with us, we can keep going. God, I pray that you would call your people back to your church that you would have another great awakening across this land, that you would let people know all across the country that there is a God and that you're coming back. God, I thank you for the opportunity to commune with you, to share your word, and I pray, Lord, that you would cause this word to stir in our hearts, that when we think about giving up, that when we think about turning back, we would remember what you say and we'll just keep going. God, I thank you in advance because I believe that indeed you are going to show up and you are going to show yourself mighty and you are going to show yourself strong in our lives. And so I can't wait to see it. And so in fact, I'm going to thank you in advance. And I want everybody that believes that God is doing something mighty in your life, that he's doing something mighty in this church, to just put your hands together and give him some praise right now. Amen. I'm excited. I am excited about what God is going, doing, and I don't care what y'all are going to do. I'm going to just keep going. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise for his word this morning.